Cool. Four pounder right there, buddy. Yeah. Hey guys, this video is brought to you by Biospa Lures. Uh, I'm gonna put the link down in the description. Go check them out. Uh, and I, I couldn't do it without them. They're, they're an awesome company. They make awesome baits. What's up guys? This is Gene Jensen. And today we're gonna talk about the chatterbait or bladed jig. Nice little keeper size fish. It is pre-spawn. I mean early pre-spawn. Water temperature just got into the low 50s. So uh, I'm heading back towards the spawning pockets just the same way the bass would be. And I'm hitting points. Bends in the creek channel. We'll talk about that here in just a second. Let me see if there's another one on this point. And I'm trying to bounce it off the bottom is what I'm trying to do. Just basically just getting it to hit the bottom every once in a while. And there's one spot where I guess the fish are hanging up because that one hit the same spot. Oh yeah, it's the dreaded ha <laughs> stick fish. <laughs> Man, he hit it good too. Nice. Well, so much for the cover they were sitting on. I enjoy fishing a, uh, a chatterbait. But uh, to be all honest, I haven't always believed in it. I didn't even want to fish it when I first got popular. Just never been the kind of a person to jump on the bandwagon, I guess. But uh, last year I tried to do a chatterbait video. I had a great day of fishing. And then I had boat problems in the middle of it. And there went my, my idea for a decent video. So. Anyway, I'm going to fish just a few more minutes and I'm going to sit down and talk about them. Cool. Just get another fish off that point, I guess. Whoa, he hammered it. Oh, that's a good one. Ah, there we go. Short and fat. Look at that little thing. Fat, fat fish. Oh. Now, the chatterbait that I'm fishing with is the new project z chatterbait and there's two different types of bladed jigs that i use i use a chatterbait and i use a rage blade and i'm going to explain to you why i use either or okay chatterbait is excellent for almost anything but brush piles as you saw i just i hit that brush pile or hit that piece of that stick and i brought the stick in and chatterbaits just don't go through brush very well they go through grass like a dream um what else? They go through rocks. They come off. They come, you know they skim across the bottom real nice. But uh, this new Project Z uh, chatterbait, they fixed all of the issues with it. And I'm going to do a separate uh, review of it, and I'll put the link at the end of this video. But uh, so far, man, they have absolutely loved it, and it's held up, and it's just a great, great chatterbait. Um, but th I keep it simple. Those are the only two I use: chatterbait, the original chatterbait type, and the uh, and the, the Rage Blade. And the reason I use the Rage Blade, and I'll show you that, is I use the Rage Blade because, uh, ooh, thought I had a bite, because it comes through brush. So I'll have two of them tied on, and I don't have the Rage Blade tied on yet. But, uh, and when I come to a, a lay down or some timber or something, I'll grab that Rage Blade that has maybe a fluke on it or something, and, uh, or maybe it's just the same color as the Chatterbait. And I'll throw it in there because that Rage Blade is, it does a lot better job of coming through timber just because of its design. All right. Now, I'm going to come back here. Whoop. Or fall down doing it. All right. Let me show you the Rage Blade. Okay. The reason I like the Rage Blade, totally different. It's got a weight down at the bottom of the blade. What happens is you're swimming it along and that thing hits and that weight actually deflects the hook away from the, the sticks, okay? As with a chatterbait, when it hits the sticks, it comes over top and it tends to roll over and it will catch them, okay? So that's just one thing to remember. There's, there's good things and bad things about every bait, but I, I love both of them. I fish both of them, so what I got going on here, it's just a point before spawning pocket. And uh, 
they will stack up on it when the water temperature gets right and the day, daytime gets right and, or the length of days gets right and they're getting ready to move back here and spawn in a couple of weeks but they stack up on these places and uh, and they love things like rattle, rattle traps and chatterbaits. You know, chatterbaits can take the place of a spinnerbait, a swim jig, a regular jig, um, a crankbait, a lot more weedless than a crankbait. And if I'm throwing a, a crankbait around the grass and, and I'm getting bit, but I'm not getting bit quite as much as I want to, I'll grab a chatterbait, kind of size it down a little bit, trim the skirt, whatever, if I feel like I need to. And, uh, and then, uh, and then fish it in and around that grass because that blade helps to basically let it ride up on top of the grass, let it come through the grass, just the way it's angled. You know, see, look here. You see, it, it'll come across and hit that grass and it just basically skips it up on top of the grass and it will glide right across the grass. So an amazing submerged grass bait. I mean, that would be my, my solution to a lot of problems when fishing grass, when trying to cover grass quickly. See, oh, I got it hung on a stick. Let it sink back down to the bottom. Now, these bass are still fairly lethargic. Like I said, we're in the low 50s, but they're starting to feed up. So I'm just, I'm, I mean, you can see how slow I'm rolling it. Just trying to keep it on the bottom. I'm not really worried about hearing, feeling a vibration and just pop my rod and just do some very slow, slow, um, not so rhythmic action, you know, I, what I call erratic action. Okay, I made about 10 casts on that side of that point. Throw up on this, on the right side of the point. And it's not a very big point, about the size of your boat. Maybe a little bigger. And I'm trying to bump it. That's the trick to chatterbaits is they work the best when you're bumping it into things, whether it's the bottom or rocks or stumps or grass, you know, when you're bumping it through and ripping it through things, that's when it does the best. So don't be so concerned with getting that blade going all the time. Be more concerned with bumping it into things and changing your speeds. Okay, now when the bass hit it, kind of feels like you got hung in the grass. They basically hit it, especially when you're fishing low to the bottom, they'll hit it and come at it. And it just feels like it got heavy all of a sudden. And the rod I use for it is I'm using, uh, this so happens to be a Fenwick that I'm doing a, a review on here shortly for, uh, for the Hooked Up Network and, uh, and a Fluger Supreme. But this is a, a medium heavy, moderate action. A, you know, it's a kind of a big crankbait rod. And you need that parabolic bend. You need that bend in the rod. Let's see if I can get this thing to bend. You know, you need that long bend in that rod to, uh, to get a great hook set on these things. It's a great spinnerbait rod. It's a great buzzbait rod. Anything with an open hook, you know, like I said, big crankbaits. But uh, it's just a good all-around open hook bait rod. And, and this is the third day I've been fishing this rod. I've been really impressed with it. But I, like, I, these are all reviews I'm, I'm working on. You know, I'm testing out these rods. I don't do my reviews just for fresh out of the box. I like to go and, and test them out and I actually fish them so I have a pretty decent um, opinion on them. Okay, back to chatterbaits. The ways you can fish a chatterbait, you know, you saw me slow rolling it. You can burn it. You can burn it up underneath it. Um, another way is to fish it kind of like hopping a jig. You know, you can either do it with your rod, let it sink back down to the bottom. Okay, or you can do it with your reel, where you just, and then you kill it, let it go down to the bottom. A couple of turns with a high-speed reel. Like I, I forgot to tell you, this is a high-speed reel. Let it sink back down to the bottom. You basically just keep doing that. And that does the same thing, it rides it up and lets it fall back down. Um, let's see, I like to fish it kind of like I do a, a rattle trap sometimes. I'll throw it up into the area. Let it sink back down to the bottom. And I'll just start and stop it. Of course, it's got a lot more drag than a rattle trap does. Same sort of deal though. It gets it running and then it flutters back down. It gets it running and then it flutters back down. 
and drag it like a jig, swim it through anything. I mean, it's just a dynamite, dynamite bait. All right, well, let's talk about uh, uh, trailers. You know, the, you can use just about any type, kind of trailer. Just use your imagination from a worm to a split tail to a paddle tail, things like that. You know, like this one right here, this one has a split tail trailer. I like the split tails in the summertime. Uh, they just give off that little quick action, not a whole lot of, uh, of crazy action. Uh, you can fish them a lot faster, uh, you know, a lot less drag. This one's got a fork tail too. I love the, the paddle tail. This is the uh, Z-Man uh, Shads uh, paddle tail. Last forever. I love to have those on there just because I don't have to change plastics out all the time. Uh, in, the, in the early spring, late fall, when the water starts to get cold and I'm throwing a lot of jigs, uh, I will put a, uh, a, a crawfish imitation on it and fish it like a jig. Hop it, you know, drag it, swim it slow like I'm doing today. You know, this is the, uh, the vile crawl by Biospawn. Um, I use the, the Rage Tail Menace just for the kicking claws. Uh, the biggest thing to, to understand with both using paddle tail swim baits, anything with action, is you got to make sure that that skirt does not interfere with the paddle tail or interfere with the claws. And so you put it in the water and see if, you know, when you bring it slowly through the water, see if that water uh, prevents those, those tails or those claws from, from kicking. Um, let me think, you can, you can fish it without a, a, a trailer and catch plenty of fish. You know, when, when, the bat, when the bass are hitting real small shad, I'll take the trailer off and trim the, and trim the skirt down. You can tra take the skirt completely off and put a, a swim bait on it or a fluke on it or something like that and, and fish it that way. It's just, man, it's, it's basically just up to your imagination. So that's it for trailers. Uh, uh, the, biggest thing I, the, the biggest thing I always tell people is just keep it simple. Don't go crazy with things. Um, you know, the more stuff, more options you have, the more confusing it gets. Bass aren't the smartest things in the world, so got a little bit of pee bring. All right, let's go see if I can catch one more. All right, well, let's go over the generals real quick, just, just in case I forgot something, because I know I did. Uh, I've got a, a long seven foot three, I think. Nope, it's a seven foot. Seven foot medium heavy, I'd even go as much as seven foot three medium heavy. Moderate action rod, so you get that parabolic band. Got 20 pound test monofilament. I love the stretch in monofilament for open hook baits like spinner baits, uh, chatter baits, buzz baits, things like that. You just get better hook sets that way. Um, high speed reel, these fish hit this thing coming at you a lot of times, especially the big ones. You gotta be able to catch up with them so you'd be able to, you know, get a lot of line in quick and get that hook set. Colors just depends on the on the water color, you know, the water color or the water clarity. Blade color, I mean, I like dark blades, I like gold blades, I like silver blades, what they come in, you know. I, I would prefer dark blade a lot of times when I don't want a lot of flash. Um, I don't really pay much attention to the flash because what I'm looking for is the vibration. This bait is ideal for dark colored water, dingy water, muddy water because you get the vibration off of it, but you also can catch fish in, in, in uh, clear water with it. So, I mean, this water is fairly clear. Visibility is about three foot, four, three and a half, four feet. So, I mean, it's, it's a fairly clear water condition and I'm still catching them, you know. You're limited to your own imagination with this bait. I mean, you know, you see me fishing it, you see how other pros are fishing it, things like that. But really, there's, it's a hard to, to fish this bait wrong. Real, uh, just go with, go with your gut. And if you don't have a gut, just go with every, whatever you think about, you know. Try different things until you get bit. This is an easy bait to fish. Now, a couple of things I forgot is the negatives of these things. Uh, I know I talked about the negatives of this one not going through uh, wood very good. The Rage Blade goes through the wood, you know, excellent. But the thing about a Rage Blade is it rides up, it tends to ride shallow. So, you know, as for uh, a half ounce chatterbait like this one is it, right, that, I, that I used to fish deep and stay on the bottom, I'd have to go up to a three quarter ounce Rage blade. I don't even know if they make them, but a, a three-quarter ounce Rage blade to get it down that deep. Just the design of the blade itself tends to cause it to to ride up shallower in the water column, which works great when you're fishing wood and brush piles and things like that. You are going to get this thing hung, um, but it's easy, to, usually easy to get it unhung as long as you don't set the hook in in anything. Get over on the other side and just shake your rod tip, and a lot of times it just falls right off. There's one right there. Bump, wham, just like it's supposed to feel.
about four pounder right there, buddy. That's how you end a video. That's how you end a video. <laughs> That's a bass right there on a chatterbait. Well, guys, introduce somebody to fishing. Take them out on the water. Show them how much fun it is to catch one of these big girls. Um, I hope you learned something from this video. Chatterbait's a great bait. Uh, bladed jig, whatever you want to call it, bladed swim jig. But, uh, I mean, it's just a, it's an outstanding bait. If you want to see the reviews, the, the in-depth reviews of each of the baits that I talked about in this video, uh, I'm going to put a couple of links over here to, uh, to go check them out. Right down at the bottom is a, is a subscribe button. Hit the subscribe button if it's red. If you've already subscribed, thank you. Uh, let me put this sucker back in the water. It's about three and a half pounds, maybe four. But uh, I love fishing. Hey guys, I want to do a real quick shout out to, uh, to Salt Life. You know, the, the apparel company make those little decals and everything else. Well, they have a, uh, a new YouTube channel and, I fig and, and they asked me to help them out a little bit with it. So go check them out. Uh, I've got the link down in the, in the, the description.